I recently watched a debate that you had with Vosh. I'm not sure when it may have taken place, but um, you guys had a pretty lengthy debate, and there was uh, one part where he was talking about two guys on an island, and if one had woke up after the other and uh, collected all the coconuts and then demanded sexual favors for the other one to get coconuts to survive. Um, during that exchange, you seem to say that you believed in um, equal access to land and water. Yeah. And I just was wondering in regards to that, um, wouldn't that kind of make you less of an ANCAP and more of like a geolibertarian Georgist mutualist? Uh, absolutely not. I don't I don't think those terms apply. I don't care to differentiate too much. To me, I think this is all under the rubric of voluntarism with the foundation of self-ownership and property rights based on you own your body and it's unethical to own another human being. And as human beings on this earth, we all have equitable rights to access to natural resources just in the Lockean property rights sense. So I maintain that this still has a foundational uh, ethics explanation through property rights, uh, through voluntarism and self ownership, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that I have to be a geo libertarian or a Georgian, or I, you know, I'm, I'm not too familiar with those labels. Maybe people want to stretch those to fit what I'm saying. I just don't care to apply them to myself. I think what I'm saying is true to simple ethical voluntarism and self ownership. And I would say in that example, as, as I think you would recall, that. To, to, to claim that that original ownership claim to uh, all the coconuts on the island is not legitimate because there has to be equitable access. So I guess the point that he was trying to make there is in regards to the fact that the world today, um, you know, there, there's great disparities in, in wealth, right? And I think that a lot of that may have actually been caused by the state, by imperial forces, obviously, mm -hmm. especially in, in North America, right, that came in and drew these imaginary lines that weren't there before um, and allocated resources to different people. And obviously, you know, with the institution of slavery and whatnot, obviously that's created mm -hmm. ramifications down the line. So because of um, what happened in the past and, and the misallocation of natural resources and, and whatnot, um, that has created disparities today where um, having a capitalist system may not make the most sense because we're, you know, there's such huge disparities between. Okay, I, I, oh, I got it wrong because I was with you until you said the capitalist system as if it's what we have, because what we have is nowhere near any academically, intellectually honest definition of capitalism. Okay, I, I, understood, but, but again, I, I, like if we remove if we remove the state today, right? Like you wanted to and, and uh, you know localize and whatnot. I imagine that disparities as a result of the aggressions of the past committed in the name of the state and doesn't resolve that. Certainly, that's why an important part of my platform was in in, in the bankruptcy. Uh, re returning all the land rather to rather than to state governments directly to the American people. So all the, the, the millions of acres, whatever it is, that the federal government claims to own, and we say, well, that's not legitimate. Who, who has a right to this? The, the people here. And, and at least, uh, yeah, and, and I, I acknowledge certainly that this is a Gordian knot that you will never perfectly untangle. And what I'm suggesting is not perfect economic justice. I think that's 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 a fantasy. But in terms of the most practical justice moving forward, because humanity is at the point now where it's more important for us to move forward and live in harmony and take care of each other and create systems that are sustainable than to uh, pursue, like, you know, even, you know, in, in pursuing crimes, you know, I'm, I'm more about unitive justice and restorative justice than, than, than the, the fucked up legal system we have now which is all punitive based not all but primarily as a punishment based paradigm not a justice based paradigm so i uh, getting I, I, excuse me if that's too far off of the point of your question well just so practically speaking i think a news story broke recently that bill gates is buying up a bunch of farmland right which is uh, very suspicious but um you know in in your ideal world you know if if we do start uh, localizing and I met Bill Gates in person. I'm not a fan. Really? Where did you meet him in person? <laughs> yeah, it's a weird story. Back to when I was a kid, actually. Um, friend of a parent's friend had a boat where he was, his, it was in Seattle. I think it was like one of his lieutenants 
was having a birthday party on a boat in the same marina. And somehow I was like, as a kid, I was able to, I was like, I don't know, 12 years old. I did, I was just like, Oh, I could, I could sneak in and snake and shake Bill Gates's hand. And so I did. That's, that's all there really is to the story. <laughs> So again, I I recently uh, saw a news story where he's uh, I guess buying up a bunch of farmland, which again is very suspicious. But if we were to uh, take apart the the federal government, um, I, I believe that your plan involves going back to states uh, initially, right, and then to more localized communities. What yep. would happen to all of that farmland that Bill Gates owns? I don't know. <laughs> I don't have I don't have the perfect answer to that question. I would like to think. That in the process of dismantling the federal government, uh, one of the things I'm really looking forward to, for example, is giving every uh, all 562 native nations in this country that are at least recognized already the opportunity to declare sovereignty and to not be uh, pushed into a new system where they fall under a state government if they choose to. Like so, any land that would that that they can claim that's not developed, I would also like to be able to return to Native American tribes. Um, and I think that's a reasonable goal within this bankruptcy process. If we're able to identify someone like Bill Gates, who has a claim to massive land that's not being used, that they can't have a legitimate Lockean claim to ownership of in any real sense, I I would like to say that it would it would be nice if we could incorporate that in the process and reclaim that as federal land for the purpose of giving back to the American people. But if not, uh, then you know he would maintain ownership and would go to the state. So I don't want to make a promise that I can't keep procedurally here, but that's how that fits into my objectives here. How about Donald Trump, for example? So he owns all kinds of properties all over the world, but all over the U.S. And uh, you know he's a he's a landlord. He he rents this land to people that you know seemingly he uh, personally <laughs> acquired through fraud and whatnot. But uh, you know even just going back to you know, his, his family, you know, over time, it, it, you could, again, trace it back to just the imperial conquest of the United States initially. Um, so what would you say about Donald Trump? Does he have a right to be a landlord for all of these different plots of land all across the United States? No. And, and I think the way that we decide what's fair and appropriate is through the process of localization and communities reclaiming property where they believe that you know, if someone outside of that community is trying to claim some property in there, uh, they should be able to judge whether or not that's a legitimate property rights claim. Okay. Just personally speaking, I, I got to say, you, you just in these answers sound, it it, it may be, uh, ANCAP, and maybe this is a, a failure of just labels overall, but it, it does seem very Georgist or mutualist. Um, I don't know if you've, are you familiar with Fred Fulbury, geolibertarian? No, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of anti- labeling within differentiating libertarianism i think like there aren't enough of us to divide you know so um the, the libertarian party statement of principles is a very clear and beautiful expression of what i believe philosophically in terms of what i call voluntarism the ethics of self-ownership the non-aggression principle the ideal of a voluntary society where there is no force fraud uh, or uh, aggression or any other kind of initiation of force and the world that that makes possible is is, is a is a beautiful dream that I, I i i think if more people saw it uh we would be compelled to create and in terms of what we need to do now what i'm trying to unite people on with this message of a presidential campaign and i'm not running but if the support is still there you know i do plan to run again um it is to, to bring people together on a practical way to move forward on all the things we agree on and at the same time provide the way forward mechanistically with localization that allows your government experience to immediately be more customized and less corrupt. And, and you go, well, shit, who's against that, right? And it's when government is down at the community level, that's my ultimate goal. I don't, I'm not an anarchist who says you can't have anything called government. If it's ethical, if it's voluntary, if it abides by the non-aggression principle, you can call it whatever you want. I don't care if it's a, I don't care if it's a big government or a small government. Even, uh, it, it, you know, you could have. I, I even say like you can have socialism and communism at a local voluntary level as long as you're not forcing on anybody else outside of that community who doesn't want to be a part of that system. So even if your goal is is something specific like that, we should be able to unite Americans 
on the failure of the federal government that is a fundamentally criminal institution that is un-American, that is anti-American. And if you, if you do the history, by the way, is the product of a coup against the Articles of Confederation. The system that we have today that authorizes intellectual property, taxation, standing armies, uh, the, the, the fiat, all, all, all of these ridiculous bureaucratic things, these were not part of the original America that was under the Articles of Confederation that, that had the, the 13 original states much more autonomous. And it was a much more decentralized, localized phenomena. The creation of the federal government as we know it was the product of, of evil men who wanted to force a new system in order to exploit it through standing armies and central banks. And they succeeded in that coup of 1789. And it's about time that we acknowledge that history for what it is. We see how it's relevant to the situation that we're in today. And we have a new American revolution that again shows the world forward, the, uh, the world the way forward in freedom, how we apply these ideals, because localization is not a uniquely American ideal. But we have we have seen the greatest perversion of centralization of government in the in the history of humanity, possibly through the American federal government as we know it today. And we have an incredible opportunity to, I think, once again, lead the world in freedom by saying. We don't need to be attached to this thing anymore. We're better off without it. We can see a way forward to a better world. And you know what? This applies to everybody. We can decentralize governments all over the world and transition to voluntary systems. I, I, I truly believe that uh, more than any particular ideological vision that I have for the world that I want to live in or the community that I want to be a part of, that's the way forward for humanity.